It's day two of weatherman Jerry Murphy's walk in Kerry, and today he's starting in Cahir Daniel in Derry Nan. This is a 45-minute drive from Cahir Savine, and it's the home of Daniel O'Connell, one of Ireland's most historic figures. Jerry's walk will take him to Derry Nan House, through the magnificent tropical gardens, along the beach nature trail, and around the Mass Loop to finish at Abbey Island. The walk is set around Derry Nan House and National Park. There are lots of walks and guided trails here. It's an absolutely beautiful morning, and I've come further south along the coast to Car Daniel. I'm really looking forward to exploring the many tracks and trails here by the rugged seashore, and I'm starting my journey here at the fabulous Derry Nan House, the home of the great Daniel O'Connell. <laughs> Daniel O'Connell was a heroic figure and a champion of Catholic emancipation in the 1800s. As well as being of historical and architectural interest, the house is set amid some spectacular scenery and the walks and trails around here are enough to keep walkers busy for hours on end. The house is full of O'Connell's artifacts and personal and family belongings. Today, the house receives about 25,000 visitors per year, and it's one of Ireland's most precious national heritage sites. Derry Nan House is also known for its exquisite gardens. Chris O'Neill of the Office of Public Works will guide Jerry through them. Yeah, so we have um, over 120 hectares of grounds here. They would have originally been the domain of the original O'Connell House and we have some incredible plants. And I believe you have plants from all over the world, really? That's right, yeah, from Madeira, from New Zealand, South Africa, South America. We have a really good South American conifer collection and it's particularly suitable for the Southern Hemisphere plants. And this here is an Empathians tinctoria and that's an Ethiopian plant. And what is this gigantic? These gardens are unusual in that many of the plants grown here can usually only grow in the tropics. But this part of Ireland is in a bubble of subtropical climate, and the plants flourish here. Um, mild winters and the warm wet summers it enables a lot of exotic species to thrive here. So in Daniel O'Connell's time there wouldn't have been ornamental gardens as such, but there were still some remnants such as these lovely elms on the left. Because of the isolation they didn't succumb to the elm disease. The trails and walks around the house are very varied in both scenery and in surfaces. There's woodland, and then suddenly there's a beach. Derry Nairn House is rich in flora and fauna. Vincent Highland is an expert in this area, and he'll take Jerry on a nature walk of a different kind. obsession for learning and this whole idea that this place is really wild because there's more species here. So as good as the biodiversity is here, you know, from the woods, the mountains down, out to the sand dunes, it's really an extension going out into the sea and when you go under the water here it's just amazing. I mean look at that for a view, it's just spectacular, it's one of the best. Yeah, no, that's unbelievable when you just see that, look at the, the extent of the beach, yeah. the sea, how placid the sea is today as well. Well, we're fortunate with the weather over the last week. It's just been incredible and my God, you know, where would you get it? Wow, this is amazing. The, just the, the contrast of the sea against the, the background of the rocks and all the hills behind. And the sea itself actually, because it's such a beautiful day, the sea is really calm and placid. And then you have the, the a very extensive really uh, stretch of beach there. Yeah. Just, just beside us as well. Yeah, what I love about it is, is that instantaneous moment. Yes. When you come over that, the brow of the hill. The brow say, wow. the hill. It's and then just... you can see like endlessly to the horizon yes. out to the uh, cow rock out there at the end of the Dursey. Exactly. It's yeah. just beautiful. So peaceful. It gives you a real sense of just peace really because it's got that real peaceful setting mm. and set against the ruggedness of the landscape. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's stunning. So I'm going to bring you down to uh, one of the stops here, which is uh, by the seashore. And uh, there's a couple of rock pools in here. And it's always a good place to get to have a look at some of the very shallow marine species, the marine wildlife that we get in Derry Nan Bay. 
everything is gentle, you know, in these ponds here. Particularly, you know, if you get down here into the area where the sea anemones are. And once the tide is in, once the water is covering them, yeah. uh, they'll come out and they'll feed with their mm -hmm. tentacles. And they can literally, if you like, send out little harpoons and strings and capture the prey and bring them in. Mm -hmm. And once they stun the prey with, with the stinging, mm -hmm. uh, the prey is just motionless and is brought back into the central mouth, which is here. Yeah, so that, that, that yeah. hole there is where, where the that's the That's exactly it. So the tentacles go, go in and feed there. So when the tide goes out, then that they actually retract and close in. And like, like these, they'll actually preserve the moisture. Mm -hmm. You've got a strawberry anemone here. Yes, you can see the difference, see the difference the distinctive pattern, difference yeah. in the pattern between the two. That's right. That's what I'm trying to show people, I suppose, mm -hmm. is that you don't really need the big stuff. You know, yes. you don't need to see big, huge whales or yes. elephants or anything. Come down to the shore exactly. and you can see the small stuff and it's equally as fascinating. So, Jerry, do you hear this? Mm -hmm. It's been calm all along, and that's just yeah. the tar turning of the tide. Turning of the tide, yeah. yeah. That's, you can hear that really clear, five, five, ten minutes. And they're just gentle turns in weather like this. Yes, I can hear it now. Yeah. You can... Um, and it comes right, look, it's actually creeping its way, way up. It, like, it only comes up maybe about, you know, four or five centimetres a time. So this is pond, first pond. And this year, this was extremely active. Sometimes, you know, it just depends. It could be over on the next pond or it could be here. But this year, I was standing here, you know, at night time and there was about 100, and I counted 125 toads walking towards the pond. It was the most amazing, amazing sure sight, you know. So what I'll do is I'll just get you to get, get down like this and then just scan the area and just see, okay. Oh, hang on, hang on, here's one, look. Uh, yeah, I can see oh, it. I see. It's tiny, right? Absolutely you wouldn't believe tiny. how small. And it, to be really gentle with these, because mm -hmm. these are protected, and mm -hmm. you've got to get special permission uh, to mm -hmm. come and actually handle these as well, you know? Yes. These are absolutely tiny. And I just have to let it crawl up onto my hand, because I don't want to oh, hurt tiny. it. Did you see that? Look at that. That's amazing. What do you think? I wouldn't have spotted that now without your trained eye looking for it. But it's that's the, the remarkable thing here, is, yeah. is that you walk along here and you just think, oh, there's nothing there, it's grand, it's a nice pond and it's insignificant, but the reality is, is that this environment of Darianan is hugely important for the Natterjack toads. So what, at what stage of its development is that? I'd say it's a month out of the ponds at this stage. The thing about it is, is that, you know, all of the adults are here at the moment, it's just that they're inside uh, the burrows, but they come out then and they'll chase insects, they'll eat snails and slugs and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And um, so it's beautiful. It's amazing, it? yeah, beautiful it's indeed, and you know? amazing. And tiny as yeah. well. One of the walks in this area is situated behind Derinan House. They call it the Mass Loop. It's a walk that takes about three hours to complete and it traverses a wild, rocky outcrop. The terrain is uneven, but the scenery is spectacular, looking west out over the Atlantic Ocean. The Mass Loop follows an ancient route over the hill behind Derinan House leading to an old graveyard and ruins of a church at Abbey Island, where Jerry will finish his walk. And when you come down off the mass loop, down onto the beach, a golden sandy beach with light rippling waves, you could be in the Bahamas, but then you pinch yourself and realize you're in South Kerry, and that's even better. Over this whole two days, I've just had this sense of remembering and recalling how much I actually love this area. That really struck me right the way through the two days. A feeling of peace for rediscovering the area. Also, at the same time, the feeling of exhilaration to be so much at one with nature over the two days in so many beautiful places. So having lived in South Kerry, having worked in South Kerry, and having rediscovered South Kerry after many years, all I can say is please get down to this part of the country. It's an absolute gem. It's got beauty, culture, history, everything that you could ask for. Beautiful trails, well-managed, well-organized, and wonderful welcoming people. <laughs>